If you want it's Emily Fox today's video is gonna be my read it or unhaul it for the month of June. I'm very excited. I'm doing this challenge the whole year. We're halfway through and it's been <laughs> definitely a challenge. I will link in the description box the rest of the series so you can kind of get more of the rules but essentially I put all the books that are unread from my shelf in a giant ridiculous jar and I'm picking some for a whole week every month deciding if I'm reading them, unhauling them, kind of just trying to get to books that I have been forgetting on my shelf or it's just it's hard sometimes to make a decision decide that you know what it's been on my shelf for like five years it's time for it to go and reading them until I, I don't want to anymore makes it easier. So these are the ones, by the way, we've gotten through just from this challenge. I read more on my shelf. Um, I think, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but I'm, I'm happy. We've made progress compared to the jar. <laughs> every month, I just, I <laughs> every month I'm impressed. So um, <laughs> I'm allowed to put one back as a gentle reminder because I feel like I should make the cat's shoes at this point. So, oh, yellow. Yellow is nonfiction. And I love nonfiction, but I hate reading them for this challenge because do you ever binge read a nonfiction? I don't, or very rarely, especially a physical one. I don't have the brain cells for it this year. It's been my challenge for the last three years to read more nonfiction, and I did so well the first year. I read like 30 something, like it was insane. And then last year I did okay, and I feel like this year I'm failing completely. I'm just like, I feel like I can't be the only one struggling. Like the moral is good right now, but like I've been struggling. So I'm going to look what it is because <laughs> I'm avoiding it clearly. And I'll probably pick something else to go along with it because again, I'll probably flip, flip, flip flop. This is Invisalign, not me. Uh, oh, that's fine. I'm such a baby. I didn't even show you first, but hopefully we'll focus. It is, I contain multitudes which is about microbes, I believe. And I actually just noticed that my library has the audiobook and I put my name on the waiting list, so that would be even better. That is one of my favorite tricks, by the way, about nonfiction books, audiobooks. If you like audiobooks, I find them just easy to follow out loud. Again, because my brain has been really struggling and they're easy to like put down. Like you don't really have to follow like a specific story, remember names and everything. I feel like some people struggle with audiobooks because of that. Love them for it. So let me, bring you. Okay, so this bookcase contains all of my nonfiction, uh, except that that is garbage stuff that I have to declutter. But let's find, this is the kind of sciencey shelf. And would you look at that? Um, I have it. Oops, no. <laughs> there you go. So I contain multitudes, the microbes within us, and a grander view of life. So microbes, I wasn't crazy. I think it might be also about like the microbiome and like yeah, they sculpt our organs, defends us against disease, break down our food, immune system, blah, blah, blah. So like, I think this is a fascinating topic. Again, not something that I would binge read, but it's not that crazy long. Like it's 200 and like 50-ish pages. That's doable. So I will be starting this one. And hopefully the audiobook comes. And we're gonna pick a second one because again, I refuse to force myself to binge read nonfiction. I've done it before and it's just, it ruins the fun. Like I just feel forced to read them and like I don't want to read more than a couple pages. So as always, if I pick a classic or nonfiction, it goes back in there because there's only so much <laughs> my poor brain cells can take. So I looked again, Who? why do I cheat this month? Um, again, hopefully I will focus, but I will remember to say it out loud, um, pray. So blue is sci-fi. <laughs> I feel like I'm deteriorating and you can notice it in my videos, uh, but Prey, Prey, I believe, is it by Michael Crichton? Because I have read some of his books and they were really interesting, but ridiculously dry. Which classic sci-fi tend to be? Let, let's go see if I can find it. I feel like it's a white book. Okay, so it would be in this shelf for sure because I just know it. Uh, I'm seeing Michael Crichton here. Did I put his books together? Oh, same shelf at least. Would you look at that? A white book. Huh. Ta-da! Okay, so I have read Andromeda Strain by him. Was really good. Short, kind of first contact with aliens, I guess. Thriller-ish, and I really liked it, but my gosh, is it dry. Just be warned, but I liked it. 
overall. And I have Sphere by him that I really wanted to read and I have been, I buy most of my books used and I haven't been buying books pretty much at all this year so I am controlling my hoarding tendencies. But I used to buy more books by authors I've liked one book from and I know now that it's a mistake because just because you liked one doesn't mean you're gonna like all of them and I don't even know what this one is about because again hoarding tendencies the books are like they used to be 25 cents at my library sales so like can you blame me so in this one an experiment goes horribly wrong in a desert a cloud of nano nanoparticles micro robots escape okay so it seems to be like AI kind of thing and we are the prey hence the title okay Okay, you know what? I dig it back. It, it should be fine, right? This one is also 350 pages, like like literally most books. So this is what my week is gonna look like. At least it's starting with this. Listen, do you see the weather right now? Like just with the lighting, you can tell it's been raining nonstop. So I have nothing better to do. And these sound interesting. A lot of, oh, how did I not notice? Nanoparticles? And then micro. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I should go take a nap and then <laughs> I will attempt to read these. I'm very hopeful that this week will be okay. If I don't like them for whatever reason, I will just get them and we're gonna pick something else because I definitely have more options. Let's take a little break from reading to do a mini book haul. I haven't done one in absolutely forever. I feel like I just haven't been in the mood. I have literally not been shopping in months I feel like. I've done one book haul so far this year. I've just been really focusing on decluttering everything but the books. I mean you've seen me <laughs> do a lot of challenges. I'm not done. Uh, I have a book on haul coming. I have books on two bookshelves. They're full. So many and I'm gonna keep going because I'm really in that mood. Anyway, I have three books to talk about. Uh, the first one I wanted to say thank you to Maria. This was on my Amazon wish list, and I adore this. This is The Sword of Kaijin. This is the same author that wrote um Blood of a Bright Haven, which I've been riffing about nonstop. This was self-published, but it was picked up by a publisher, and it's supposed to be republished. I think at first it was like end of the year, but I think now it's like this summer. I'll put the, the actual date on the screen. I'm so happy for her because this is absolutely amazing. I mean, it was my best book of last year, and I've been riffing about it. I'll continue to do so. You need to read this. Adult standalone fantasy. This one, I don't know if it's also going to be republished under publisher. And I feel like it did get quite a bit of hype considering that it was self-published. But again, adult standalone fantasy. And I love this. Uh, it took me like two years. I bought it on Kindle at first. And I it took me two years to actually get to it. I had heard great things, but you know how it is. I forget books on Kindle. <laughs> and I'm so happy I finally picked it up because this was a five star. Both of her books were five star. This one took me like maybe the first half to get into. The other one is like first chapter. But this is one of the best characters arc I've read, like ever. Uh, I struggle at first because one of the main, the main female character, she kind of get little flashbacks, a little bit, a little hints of her past life where she went to the school. Think of it like as an international school where she was using, um, learning to fight, very independent, magic, like strong female character who ended up getting married into this very uh, conservative, traditional, isolated family. And that's what she became, you know, quiet. She had babies, she did what was expected of her and she's not happy. So I was really struggling to just follow her because of it for the first half of the book. And then one of the other point of view is her son who uh, is trying to, you know, satisfy his father mainly, trying to do what is expected of him and then also being conscious of the more modern world. Uh, what's happening, there's this big war and they basically only hear hints because again, isolated, but will they be forever isolated from the war? Da, da, da. Anyway, that's the first half and then things hit the fan and it's just really, really amazing. I really enjoyed watching their growth, finding themselves and just amazing. So yeah, so happy to have this. Thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to see what else she'll come out with because so good. The next section is sponsored by Book of the Month. They're an online service for readers. They help promote new and emerging authors and find books that you will love. Their team vets hundreds of new books every month and give you options of new early releases that you can pick from. But each month you get to pick the one that you're the most interested in and it will be sent to you. They also have a great skip policy. So if for whatever reason one month you don't want to receive a book, you can skip and you won't get charged. So the first one is this one. This is The Lion Women of Tehran, which 
first off look at that cover absolutely gorgeous so this one is set in the 50s you're following a young girl who uh you're gonna follow for three decades and you can see how the people that she met when she was that young really shaped and transformed her life and it's saying that it's like a novel of friendship betrayal of redemption so sounded cool and then the other one also slightly outside of my comfort zone is this one this is one star romance and i've been reading more and more romance and i think they're really fun especially during the summer I tend to gravitate towards them a little bit more. And this one is set up. I mean, they always get me where they're set up, right? This one is a struggling writer who is forced to walk down the aisle with, uh, at her best friend's wedding with the man who left a one-star review of her book, which I would never want to meet an author. I gave a book one star. Actually, even like a three or four, like I don't want to meet the authors. I have to pretend they don't exist, but I feel like that sounds like a really fun setup. Uh, Enemies to Lover seems to work a little bit better for me than anything else. So those are the two that I ended up picking. So if you're interested, I will put all the information in the description box. You can also use this coupon code to get your first hardcover for $9.99. So I will be adding these to my TBR, especially this one. I feel like that sounds like a fun summer book. And I'm going to go back to reading, which it's doing okay. But we'll see. Definitely not a romance, a fun little silly romance, but can't always just read that or can you update i'm like 30 pages into the book but i'm gonna insert the first page because i read it and i was like oh okay i wasn't sure i was going to be in the book into the book this this is good i'm into it and then i started reading it and now i'm back to nothing <laughs> okay so it cut off because my phone has been full and i can't seem to empty it so we're doing the update here because i tried to go further i can't do this to myself um essentially it started good. What the first sentence sounded good, and then you get this man who drama at work, loses job, so he's forced to be a stay-at-home dad. His wife is doing some really interesting research, but he starts suspecting that maybe she's cheating on him and like she's being weird, blah blah. blah. So basically, thinking she's a big b-word, and um, I thought I feel like you're supposed to feel bad for him, but I felt like there were little snide comments like in his head in the narration that made me just not like him and i was wondering is it the author because after a while like once it come <laughs> sorry speak french once you're starting to wonder okay maybe it's just the character more than that you start feeling like it's the personal opinion of the author you know for example i put it down at like 68 but i know at 65 there was one of those instances which pissed me off um He's starting to think about how she, they, they had a fight and he's like it's starting to sound like she's trying to prepare herself for like divorce and like turning the children against him and he's saying like every father knew the legal system was hopelessly biased in favor of mothers and like he goes like the courts gave lip service to equality and then rule ball and the case that you know a drug addict gets her kid I went to law school, right? And it's literally one of the first things we learned how this is bullshit. Like, <laughs> not true whatsoever. When people, when father requests equal, um, equal share, like 50-50, they get it. The reason they don't, they don't request it. They don't want it. Anyway, um, that was <laughs> like the last draw. I tried to read a couple more pages and it just pissed me off. So I ended up Googling the author because it's starting to feel personal. And I didn't make it far. I just thought it was like a climate change denier, which I feel like these opinions tend to just go together. So I'm not really enjoying it. Clearly, I'm already annoyed 60 something pages into it. So we're just going to give up on it. I'm sad because I like Jurassic Park. I did like uh, even Timeline. Like it wasn't perfect, but like it was enjoyable for what it was. And I liked uh, what's the other one? Intermittent Strain. So like I was really looking forward to reading more by him. I had this one and I have like Sphere on my shelves, but like. Now I'm pissed. Like, what was that? Ew. If you know anything else about him, let me know because I, I just got the worst vibe and I'm like, this is personal. Since the goal of this challenge is to read or unhaul, I'm unhauling this. I just filmed my last, my next unhaul video actually, so it's gonna be on my shelf for a year, but whatever. One of them needs to be the first one. So let's start again. <laughs> so new. Maybe I should have let the cat choose, but they're very busy right now. So. No. <laughs> Yellow is nonfiction. Um, what is this? <gasps> oh. Okay. Um, I'm halfway through ish the audiobook 
that I'm currently listening to. Actually, the book is over there because of something that happened while I was doing the on-haul video. Once you see that video, <laughs> um, so that one I'm listening to is an audiobook. I, my library was available, so happy about this. Um, but this is, they were her property, which I should have shown you. I have been meaning to read this for literally ever. Um, do I really want to be reading two nonfiction at the same time? Not really, but I'm going to start it. I, I don't think I'm going to have time to finish it during the vlog, but it's going to force me to start it. So that's fine. I'm going to grab it. I don't have my phone because again, it's, I don't know what's wrong with it. Anyway, let me grab it. I was literally talking about this in the comments recently, how I really want to read this, but I know it's going to be like a heavy book and I just haven't been ready. Uh, it's basically the role of white women as slave owners in the US and how I feel like it's looked over quite often, but... I thought this would be interesting. It's only about 200 pages, but yeah, it's probably going to be rough, but I might as well start it. So that's what I'm going to do, but it's not going to be the main book for the rest of this challenge, right? So I can't be, I, I cannot binge read that. So I'm going to pick another one. And if it's another yellow or purple classic, I, I'm picking something else because I need something that is a little lighter, please. Nope. Let's look though. I'm curious. Uh, the opposite of loneliness. I don't even know what that is. So we're going to pick something else. Is it open? Okay. Green. A curse so dark and lovely. Lonely. That's a fantasy. I think it's why fantasy, is it? Let's grab it. Actually, I could do this. The shelves. It has to be somewhere behind this. Um... Mm -mm. Do you see it? I don't see it. A curse. So dark. Oh, it must be there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, I hope that worked. Um, but this is the book, A Curse. So dark and lonely. I believe this is the retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I'm just making a decision to get rid of it. Why fantasy? I feel like I'm not gonna love this. It's been on my shelf for forever and I'm trying to declutter those. It's been an ongoing project, so we're just gonna grab another one. At least it's effective, but a challenge. So, another fantasy. This one is Gardens of oh, No. <laughs> no. I'm allowed to put one back every month and this is it. Uh, this is Gardens of the Moon, which is like an adult fantasy series, the first book, and I've heard that it's really complicated to get into. I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, you should have. Please, I just survived this book. I need something lighter. I already have two non-fictions on the go. <laughs> We're picking another one. <laughs> no! <laughs> Blue, sci-fi. Okay, this is The Fold. Okay, that rings a bell. That rings a bell. Um, let's, 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 let's go. I'm going to try to bring you again. <laughs> Sci-fi. Um, I think, where is it? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember what it is about. I got this when I was, when I was in a hard sci-fi kick, which I clearly am not lately, but maybe I am going to go back there would say that he's just your average everyday guy and that's exactly what he wants. Okay, so it sounds like it's like a travel between different version of our world. What's the expression? I oof. I was sitting in the sun trying to enjoy my book and here I am <laughs> back inside. <laughs> I'm still sweating. Um, so yeah, travel between parallel universe. I think that's how you say it in English. The fold. Okay. Um, I'm going to go sit outside for 100 pages. Okay. Okay. Um, two more books added to my pile. <laughs> but we are getting rid of two. So, things things are moving. Things are moving. So, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix my phone. Update. I finished it back. And boy, do I have some opinions. <laughs> um, my opinion went up and down with this one. Because at first, the first maybe like half of it, I was really enjoying it. I was like solid four star like i was impressed i thought this wasn't going to be like hard to read for some reason like i was putting it on the shelf with a bunch of like hard sci-fi 
but no, it, it's not. And it's extremely readable. So at first I was watching it, I was reading it like you watch those like B movies. I love like sci-fi movies that are like not silly high budget, but the concepts are really cool. Like I've watched some, I uh, would love recommendations. For example, I love time loops and like triangle is not super popular, but like that one was a good one. Or uh, cube was a good one. Like I like those. And I thought I was going to get these kind of vibes with this one since, you know, you found this man who has very good memory uh but isn't really using it for work because he wants to be a teacher instead for whatever reason you get that towards the end but he ends up being finally accepting this job from his friend who works with government to go and see kind of spy but not really on these people that have made research fold i kind of gave you a little bit of what it was right in the beginning because i didn't know any better it started really good and i was enjoying it i do feel like the the first twist mystery you can see it coming. There are so many hints that it's like really obvious, but like again, so readable that I was having fun. Hence, of like I was thinking four star. And then things start not being as good. Um, there is one thing, one of the female characters, she's really cold towards him at first and then becomes like the complete opposite. And it's just meh. But mostly it becomes too much. Like it becomes like an action movie, like bad sci fi action movie. And I just struggle to finish it. Which is so weird because I was flying through this book until the end and afterwards I had to like force myself and I believe this is a series and I'm, I don't know, should I continue? Are they actually linked? Because I'm not, I'm not feeling it. So I don't even know. I feel like beginning, yes, is a four, but the ending, the second, like the last third is like a two. So I don't know what I'm going to do rating wise because mm -mm. I'm going to go pick the next one. Uh, but I wanted to update you. I don't know if I included that part in the way I'm editing because it's been all over the place. But I got the cats a gift, an expensive gift. Um, I decided to put money aside and splurge and I got them a wheel because <laughs> they have a lot of energy. You're probably currently hearing Chunky meowing in the background because he's a chatty baby. What you doing? He's on the table. He's not even allowed on the table. Anyway, I got them a wheel. And I got some help, build it, and that thing is huge. I had to get the extra large because Charlie is a long boy and he wouldn't have been able to run otherwise. So we got him that. Uh, we did have built it, took like an hour. <laughs> My hands were so sore. And Chunky actually was the one supervising uh, quality control. He was definitely right up in our business the whole time. And as soon as it was built, Charlie glammed on it, first thing. And he started to run. I tried to include some clips, but like they only run for a couple seconds. And by the time I turn on the camera, <laughs> you know, but at first he started running. His belly was like on the floor, like running. It was so funny. And then Claudia climbed on it right away. She knew because it's Claudia. She's the smartest cat ever. So she took to it really quickly. Chunky did not touch it that first day. And at this point, he does use it. He walks on it while meowing the whole time and each other to run they actually run on it only a few seconds and again i don't always have my phone right there to click to record uh but i'll have inserted a few clips and they're having fun and i'm hoping that they're going to keep using it because that thing was a little bit of a splurge and i want them to use up that energy especially chunky which it's it's time for their nap right now so he's extra chatty so yeah, uh, that's the first thing I did. And then I also got them the buttons, the talking button that you use for pets. And at first I put all four on the floor, which I wasn't sure what to use them for. I did do like, I'll put them on a the screen. I can't say those words. They know those words, but like they cuddle, play, and then no, because I didn't know what to do with the last one. So obviously Claudia, <laughs> the smartest cat ever, took to it right away and pretty much instantly figure out the word no. And she went for that button like 10 times and I'm just laughing the whole time. No. That's her favorite button already. Of course. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh my God. This might've been a mistake. And yeah, I thought 
they weren't going to touch them because after that none of them touched any of them and i decided to only leave one the f-o-o-d one and didn't touch it until last night claudia did and she was actually using it because there was just a little bit of uh wet food left in the plate and she doesn't really like that flavor so she went and clicked on f-o-o-d button you cannot convince me that she didn't mean it because she did. She 100% did. Because I've been telling them that word, right? And they knew a couple ones and that one they know. So she's smart. So I'm keeping the buttons. I was starting to think maybe I should return them, but no. Looks like it might, it might work. Unfortunately, I was mostly getting them because I wanted Chunky to tell me what he wants. Because he's always been <laughs> He's doing it right now. Uh, but yeah, that's how things are going. The cats are living their best life at the moment. So I'll get you more clips of them running whenever they get better at it. But so far, pretty good. I forgot. Um, I did read like, can you even tell? Oh, it's here. Okay. <laughs> I started it, but I'm still in the intro. I'm almost done with the intro. So I'm missing some clips because I was having issues with my phone, like I have mentioned. So I picked two more books from the jar, a YA fantasy named Ruined and an adult sci-fi called Gravity. Okay, let's grab the Weiss Fantasy <laughs> first. I think it's like a gray color. Do I still have it? Did I get rid of it? I think I may have gotten rid of it in my unhaul video. So let's grab the sci-fi. So these are the sci-fi shelves. And at the top, I was doing the challenge reading the books I don't want to read on my TBR. And da, 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 there it is. Okay. So I do want to read this. Uh, I've heard that it's really readable and I believe this is First Contact with Aliens or is it like a disease in Spaceship or something? So I was on a big kick of those for a while and I got this one, didn't get around to reading it and now I guess I am. I think this one is a bit older. Let me check. Okay, 99. It's not that old but I feel like for booktube anything that isn't from the last five years is considered old but that's the one I'm going to be reading. It's again about like 400 pages but I flew through the other one even though I kind of hate reading the last part so that's fine but we have time to read another one so yay me anyway so I'm gonna go I have my post-its do you see this this is Claudia she has a personal vendetta against any kind of bookmarks ever she's always pulling them out of my books and this one she decided to just chew it so I have to be more careful with them she is slightly violent but better to post its and bookmarks than my toes so i have had quite the week um i don't know what the vlog will have looked like until now because if it was choppy it's because not only did i have issues with my phone uh then we had a heat wave and i lost electricity on and off and then we're having thunderstorms so i <laughs> chaos but i really wanted to finish the vlog because i finished three books this week and like that's all that matters. So I had reviewed The Fold, which I think I'm going to lean towards giving it two stars, which feels harsh because it was good at first and so readable, but I'm really disappointed with the way it ended. Uh, I realized now that it is part of a series, but I think uh, the book 14 is book one. So like, did I make a mistake? Or do I have to? Some of you might probably know. <laughs> Let me know. But yeah, um, it is what it is. I did finish... This nonfiction, I contain multitude of microbiomes within us and a grander view of life, which, oh my gosh, can you see? Oh, uh, because I had to delay posting this video because lost electricity, I posted my own haul, which you can still see the books. <laughs> On the desk, I need to bring them to the library or little libraries. But yes, I you saw me... <laughs> end the life of a wasp which i can't, couldn't even talk <laughs> but there's still the juice i need to clean that up um but yeah i finished it the audiobook this was just useful for that apparently and i really enjoyed it i feel like this would be part of all the books that i've been raving about like non-fictions that are like beginner friendly i felt like two years ago when i tried to read as many as possible I was really focusing on trying different topics to see what I actually ended up liking and then going more into. And I think this is a topic that I will want to go more into. But microbes, yes, in general. But I feel like everyone and their mom has been obsessed with um, microbiome, like your stomach, your gut. Me included. Me included. If you have any recommendations, books or uh, documentary. I saw the one. Is it Hack Your Gut, Hack Your Health? 
that was going around. Uh, I am not over the smoothie. Like, we're just gonna go with that, the smoothie scene. Um, <laughs> but traumatized. But overall, it was interesting, and yes, that, that kind of gave me vibe this. So I'm gonna give it, I don't know, four. I don't like rating my non-fictions for some reason, but it was enjoyable. Do recommend it. Uh, an audiobook was not a bad way to go through it. I do want to mention quickly that I did not make more progress because there was only so many nonfiction. It was my fault for picking a second one and I, I kind of forgot I was listening to the other one as an audiobook. But I do want to continue because, again, I, I've been wanting to for a while. Now, the important part is this one, uh, Gravity. So I wasn't I'm sure what to expect, although I'm noticing now it says medical suspense. <laughs> it's like a sci-fi thriller which they do tend to work for me, and I feel like similarly to too many books next to me right now. Um, to this, uh, this felt a little bit like a sci-fi movie, but compared to this, I enjoy this one a lot more. Um, I feel like the ending was stronger in general. So as I had mentioned a bit when I introduced the book, picked it up from the jar. Yes, it is uh, an astronaut that you're mainly following, uh, going on a mission, and people are sick in space. I wasn't sure at first if it was like a disease or like uh, alien whatever because it's a trope that I wanted to explore a lot and I had bought that book because of that so I'm not going to spoil it but I did enjoy it so this was very readable. I would say four star also. Um, like a solid read, extremely readable. I feel like I've been reading so much this week, like so, so much. And yes, one was an audiobook, but still. Um, I don't love mass market paperbacks, but this one was so floppy. It's usually what I resent is they're stiff, right? But this was perfect. I feel like this is the kind of book that I like during the summer because you can go to the beach or the park and like read and it's not heavy. Uh, I only put one post-it because I couldn't stop laughing because this guy is taking care of someone else's cat and they're saying the cat is 28 pounds. What kind of cat do you have? I feel like my babies are big and they're like 12 pounds. <laughs> like 28? Like do you have like a Maine Coon or something? Anyway, they're not specifying but that seemed excessive. Like does the, the author own a cat? Probably not. So um, <laughs> this is how my week went which I enjoyed myself. I feel like, sure, no all-time favorites, maybe, but I don't need to always. I mean, it would be nice if I did, but like, it's not realistic. But I feel like I'm finally feeling out of the reading slump. I feel like I'm gonna have a really good month because my next, well, the next two vlogs, actually, I'm expecting to give these books like five stars. So, fingers crossed. Now, let's do my favorite part, my newest addition to these videos, and it is to put the little papers in the jar which the desk is pretty full, but we're gonna try anyway. Now that my phone works <laughs> and I can hear Claudia, so we might see some paws. Nearly you have the little paw, you have the little nose. Look at her, oh my God, hi. Wow, that crack is big. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, is there someone else? Oh, <laughs> I never noticed I could see the eyes too. That is so funny, girl. What you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Where are my pretty boys too? Which one are you? Are you Chunky or Charlie? Which one are you? I have a feeling it's Charlie because Charlie does not put his paws on the doors. Someone does though. Someone does. <gasps> not the claws. Not the claws. So I put the papers over here so we can put them in the jar. These are all the books. That I finished or got rid of during the challenge. So um, this one I will not put in there. I'm going to put it back in here because quite frankly, oops, I do want to finish it this year, but I didn't for the challenge. So we're going to put it back there. So this is the one that I did not even attempt. Then we have the one that I did finish. And then the other one I finished. And then the one I didn't finish. Oh, I'm missing one. Ha ha. These two are the ones. I forgot about this. <laughs> okay, so this is the other one I finished. And the one I had already gotten rid of in my unhaul. So that was really good. How many was that? Like six? I literally just emptied it. But boom. We're going to pretend we did not see that dust. Um, Yay. And I forgot to put this one where it belongs over here for a year is it me or is it almost exclusively 
It is. It's like literally all fantasy, sci-fi, and a couple non-fiction. How many have we done so far? Is it like the fourth one right now? How, how come? How come? Uh, to be fair, most of the jar is sci-fi. Well, not most of the jar, but probably a good percentage because I read these genres the most. Like I have two bookcases for both and then three for everything else. So it makes sense, but hopefully we start picking something else. If I don't pick more uh, like mystery thriller horror, for example, in September, October, I'll just purposely pick red ones or something because I want to mix it up a little bit, but still, it, I feel like it feels fuller than last year. I feel like I've been better. I just decided deciding not to pick them up. Like just in this video, there were two that I did not finish, did not even really attempt them much. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like it's a really fun challenge. I hope you're enjoying it too because we're doing the rest of the year and hopefully we're going to do this forever. Honestly, would you want me to? Because I could see myself doing that pretty much forever. Anyway, I will be putting more videos on the screen that are from when you check out, including I did a beginner friendly uh, book recommendation for fantasy and the unhaul video that I just mentioned where I got rid of 60 plus books. It was acted and I did fear for my life with the wasp. <laughs> I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.